Greeting Zipak, what's up with your boy Zdog MD aka Dr. Zubin Damania. How are you guys today? Listen, everybody worries about their kids having food allergies. It's one of the biggest sort of interesting epidemiological things that's happened in modern history that we have this rise in the rate of allergies that previously were very rare, peanut allergies, etc. And lots has been talked about in terms of what could be causing our children to suddenly be developing these allergies. There have been hypotheses over the years, such as the hygiene hypothesis that says that we are too clean now, we're not exposing our children early on to antigens that might actually cause them their immune system to accept these compounds like peanuts instead of reacting against them to cause anaphylaxis and other more minor allergic reactions. There are theories about gut microflora being changed through antibiotics and other changes in our environment. And the thought is it's not so much a genetic change because it's happened so quickly, but rather an environmental change in how our children are being exposed. So when a press piece comes out that says baby wipes may cause childhood allergies. You can imagine many mothers, many fathers, many parents, and many doctors might even take notice and go, well, this makes some plausible sense because it's clearly something that we're doing in the environment that's causing this to happen. And baby wipes are increasingly more ubiquitous. We find them everywhere. And so therefore, it must be that in a very similar way that um, Andrew Wakefield mistakenly had us believe that vaccines are associated with autism because everyone's vaccinated. There are more vaccines now than there were back in the day, therefore, and there's more autism, so therefore vaccines must cause autism. Correlation implying causality, even though there may not be more autism, we just diagnose it better, even though there's no evidence of causation. Now with the baby wipe piece, everybody wants to figure out what's going on with kids and allergies. So they decided, uh, some folks at Northwestern did a very decently designed trial where they said, let's look at this situation and test some theories. So this is what they did. They took a line of mice, mice, okay? Not humans, mice. This becomes important, so pay attention. They took a line of mice that were genetically predisposed or designed or otherwise engineered, they're bred with a predisposition to an eczema-like skin disorder so that their skin integrity wasn't great. Now, the reason they probably did this is that many children who ultimately develop allergies, food allergies, other types of allergies, um, there is an association with childhood eczema and this sort of uh, concept of the atopic child, a child who's just kind of prone to allergies. They have eczema, they're snuffling, they have allergies, that kind of thing. So they said, let's do that because maybe there's something to do with how the skin is uh, not a good barrier and it's letting in antigens and causing these allergies. So decent theory, again, all science, all experiments begin with a hypothesis and then you start to test it. And then you have to have the null hypothesis, which is these things don't cause allergies. You have to start with that. And the goal is to try to show evidence against the null hypothesis, right? Well, in this case, they took this particular breed of mice. Then they uh, exposed that already kind of non-integritous skin. In other words, the skin was already kind of uh, uh, damaged through eczema breakdown, whatever lack of integrity that these mice showed. And they exposed it for 40 minutes to peanut or egg allergens, okay? Then they also had dust allergens, either from dust mites or from mold spores. Then they also had sodium lauryl sulfate, SLS, which is found in, it's a soap-like, you know, uh, ampha, what's the term for that, where it's amphoteric, where it's both loves water and loves lipids, like many soaps. And it, uh, uh, it's found in many household soaps and personal care products. Guess what it's not found in? baby wipes. Turns out the major brands of baby wipes do not contain sodium lauryl sulfate when people actually checked. So the idea that then you can have a skin damage through these genetically predisposed eczematous mice, expose them to all these allergens, and the soap. And the thought is that the soap disrupts the skin further, this is the theory, and allows these antigens in, which the child then forms an allergic reaction to, and the memory of the immune system then triggers food allergy later to peanuts, dust, whatever the heck it is. Well, awesome. So what they found is with this perfect storm of, you know, GMO mice, dust, 
peanuts, egg, and sodium lauryl sulfate, which isn't found in baby wipes, they had a higher rate of peanut allergy in these mice. Okay, the press then took this story and said baby wipes associated with childhood allergies. Now, let's go back for a second. Is sodium lauryl sulfate in baby wipes? No. Could there be a similar mechanism? Maybe. Are mice the same as humans? No. Are mice studies conclusive in terms of causing, uh, of um, uh, being associated with human causality? Absolutely not. There are countless, innumerable studies in mice that never pan out in humans. They are different organisms. They share some similarity, but they are vastly different organisms. So, mistake number one, cannot extrapolate mice to humans. Mistake number two, this is an artificial perfect storm of chemicals, none of which actually exist in baby wipes. Mistake number three, listening to the press to give you medical information. They don't get it right more often than not. Sometimes they really do a good job, but many times they don't. And there are already press articles counteracting this uh, inaccuracy. Um, and one of our good friends on the show, Dr. David Stukas, Dave Stukas is an, a pediatric allergist. Uh, and he actually, he actually posted, and I'm going to post this link, and he uh, showed me this earlier today. Uh, he's at Nationwide Children's uh, Hospital uh, in Ohio. And he, if you haven't seen a show with us, it's amazing. He is a fantastic communicator, a wonderful human being, cares deeply about children and science and debunking nonsense. And he wrote a great piece that summarizes this. He basically said, look, the study doesn't involve baby wipes or humans. It was performed in laboratory mice with skin barrier dysfunction. They uh, went through all this exposure and they speculate but didn't actually study that the soaps found in baby wipes may cause infants to develop allergies. So all the things that we just talked about. And so David, who I trust deeply about issues on allergy because he has been doing this all his career, uh, also goes on to say that we don't know what causes allergies in children, and it's multifactorial. There is probably no one answer for every single child. Every child is different. It's a combination of genetic predisposition and multifactorial, multi-factor environmental predispositions. Now, that's a mouthful. How would the press ever say that to you in a way that you're gonna listen? So it's much easier for the press to say, baby wipes are associated with childhood allergies in new study. This is why we should be deeply skeptical and we need to learn how to think for ourselves. As healthcare people, those of us who are, it's our responsibility to help promote the understanding of critical thinking to our non-medical colleagues and to spread truth whenever we can. And that's what this platform's for. That's what we're trying to do. Dave Stukas in this article actually talks about a second study that's making the waves on Facebook as well, antacids and antibiotics associated with childhood allergies. And this was a big study, 800,000 children. And this is how this study worked. They reviewed a database of 800,000 children retrospectively. And they looked at past medical records to see if there was an association of um, medication use in infants with later development of allergies. And what they found is that there was a higher risk of allergies among infants who were prescribed uh, antibiotics and antacids. Well, let's deconstruct this one as David Stukas does in the article I'll link for you. The problem is that the study looked at association. It looked at correlation. So, oh, it turns out that the people who were taking antacids and antibiotics, it correlates to the development, de later development of allergies. So does that mean that those drugs cause the allergies? Absolutely not. It means you're seeing a statistical correlation. Just like I'm really awake in the morning and that correlates with the fact that um, I got out of bed in the morning. Well, did getting out of the bed make me awake? No, it's a correlation. That's the stupidest example I could ever come up with, but it just popped in my head. What can I say? I'm tired. So that being said, the other problem with the study is that they used prescriptions. So the child received a prescription for this medication. Doesn't actually mean they took the medication. The third problem is they relied for the diagnosis of allergies on billing codes not on an actual diagnosis. So somewhere in there, there was a, uh, let me make sure that's correct because uh, let's see, two associations, blah, 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 prescriptions, diagnosis codes. Yeah, so they used like ICD-9 or ICD-10, whatever it was, to establish that the patient had this or that disease. 
There could be billing errors. It could be miscoded. There's a million reasons that that couldn't, may not be accurate. And then the last possibility is that there's reverse causality. So in other words, these children being an allergic type and atopic type display some symptoms innately due to their condition that cause them even early on to end up getting prescribed antacids and antibiotics. Were they sniffly? Were they uh, you know, having, uh, throwing up a lot? Could these have been signs of early allergy and therefore they were getting these drugs, not the drugs causing the allergies? Guys, this is why when we look at data, and this is what will happen, anti-vaccine people, natural medicine people, they will say, look at all these studies that show this. They don't show anything. They show, if even, even if they're well-designed enough to show this, they show a correlation, right? And that is where we have to be really careful because correlation doesn't equal causation. I really want to th thank Dr. David Stukas. I'll put a link to his uh, post. I really want you guys to read it and share it because it's tremendous. Let's read some quick... Um, Quick stuff here. Uh, a lot of people, so bup, 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 bup. my son's allergies cause him to be more susceptible to sinus infections, so he gets antibiotics to treat that. Carrie Overson, exactly. It, there, there, it, there's a reverse causality there, right? It's not that the antibiotics are causing the allergies. Um, <laughs> Susan Wolf says, not into pediatric stuff. Sorry, Z Dog. Hey, man, to each his own. I have kids, so I care about this stuff. We need an ICD 10 um, code for pediatric parent disorder. Uh, Pamela Hiker, I like that. I would, I would pay for ICD to re revise that. Anyways, guys, so here's the call to action. Critically look at data. See if it's correlation, what type of study it is. We'll keep talking about how to do that, right? What I want you to do with this particular cast, we kept it short so that you can share it with all your friends who've shared the baby wipe story with you. Put them at ease. Say we just don't know. People are uncomfortable with a lack of firm answers, but science doesn't ever disprove anything. It just says with statistical probability, this is unlikely. And that's the best we can do with our modern science. And it's still better than all of human history where we've lived in the dark, in a world of magical thinking where people died young and brutally. Science will save us combined with the human heart and our relationships with other humans and this whole idea that we are conscious and that is magical. Science, magic, it's all here, people. Hit share, hit like, leave a comment, tell me a story, and we out. Peace.